Good morning, options traders, and welcome back, everyone. Well, I've got to warn you up front, enter at your own risk. This one's going to get complicated, and unfortunately, there's just no other way around it. But I did receive an email from one of our traders asking about a gamma hedge, and it's something that he read about and just said, you know, what does it do? Why would somebody use a gamma hedge? Well, it's a complicated strategy, but it's a very common one for professional traders sometimes called a gamma neutral hedge. It can be handy for people who sell naked options. Not that I ever suggest doing that, but for those who do, making it gamma neutral can certainly be a big advantage. And you'll see why in just a moment. Now, even if you don't follow the steps in this video, that's okay. I think you can still get probably the more important message from this. And that is that just about anything is possible if you understand your option strategies. So what is a gamma hedge? Well, to understand it, let's start with a delta hedge, which I've talked about in previous videos. If you delta hedge a position, what you're doing is that you're keeping your delta close to zero. But that's only for a small range of stock prices. Sometimes when traders hear that they've got somebody that, you know, maybe told them they've got a delta neutral position on, that they think that they have zero deltas forever. And that's simply not true. It's only for a small range of stock prices. And that can still be beneficial, but just don't let it fool you. You still have risk. Now, your delta hedges are normally done with shares of stock. Why? Well, stock has delta 1, gamma 0. So your delta hedges are relatively easy. All you have to do is offset the amount of deltas that you have in your position with shares of stock. So here's an example. Let's say that we have a $100 call and there's 90 days to expiration, volatility 20%, interest rates 5%. We pop this into a pricing model, and it tells us that the call would trade for $2.50. Well, what if we short this option? We sell this naked call, and we find out that it also has a delta of 57. That same pricing model would tell us that. What that's telling you is that you are mathematically short 57 shares of stock. Because each option contract controls 100 shares of stock, delta 57 means it's equivalently 57 shares of stock, but only for a small range. So if you're mathematically short 57 shares, how would you offset it? Well, it's easy. You would just buy 57 shares. So we're short 57 shares with our option. We're long 57 shares with the stock, and they therefore make the overall delta zero or neutral. But remember, it is delta neutral only for a small range of stock prices. Why? Because we have negative gamma. Recall that if you buy an option, whether it's a call or a put, you have positive gamma. So therefore, if you sell an option, you have negative gamma. And it's this negative gamma that will eventually introduce risk. So let's say that we did this. We shorted this option for 250 and then we bought 57 shares of stock. This would be our profit and loss diagram. So you can see that this blue curve is fairly flat, but only for a very small range. As you start moving up away from this strike of 100, or if you start moving below it significantly, you start entering into risk. And those risks or losses only get bigger as you move further away. And that's why we're getting this upside down U shape. This is a classic example of negative gamma. And what this means, if you have negative gamma, is that you are selling shares into a rising market. So think about it. If you're selling shares of stock or shorting shares, that's what this slope is right here. These are negative deltas. And if you're shorting shares of stock into a rising market, that's not a good thing. That's where these losses are coming from. Now, negative gamma also means that if the stock price falls, that you are buying shares of stock. You are becoming longer. That's what this slope is down here. This is positive delta. And so if you're buying shares as the market's falling, that's also not a good thing. And that's what's causing these losses down here. So that becomes the problem with a delta hedge is that we've got gamma. And so now this is where we try to solve it with a gamma hedge. And what we're trying to do is to flatten out this blue curve. Because if it's not quite so sharp of a turn like this, we're not going to start facing losses as quickly. So how do we create a gamma hedge? Well, to do it, we want to be delta neutral, 
but we're also going to be gamma neutral. And to do that, we have to buy another option to neutralize the gamma. Why? Because stock has no gamma. You can't use stock to do a gamma neutral strategy. Now, part of the plan is that it also has to be a different option. It could be a different strike, different expiration. But for this example, I'm going to assume that we are buying a 30-day $100 call. Recall that we shorted a 90-day $100 call. So I'm going to keep the strikes the same, but I'm just going to reduce the time to expiration. So to figure out our gamma hedge, I need to figure out how many shares of stock will also balance this. So once I've balanced my gamma, I also have to go back and rebalance my deltas. Why? Because when we buy this second option, it's going to tweak our deltas. Yeah, I told you it's going to get complicated. So this is where things start to get really tricky, that we have to balance two different equations. So bear with me here. If you don't follow it again, you can still get probably a more important piece of information of just the power of options. But here's the way that you would solve it. The first thing is that we have to collect all of our deltas. So let's say this is the number of shares of stock that we're going to need. We don't know what it is, so I'm going to make that in red. But it has delta 1. I do know that. We are also short our first option. That's what this little one is down here. And it has some delta. I know what that is. I can just plug that in. And because we've sold it, it's a minus sign. But then we're going to have a second delta of the option that we buy. But we don't know how many contracts to buy. That's what this N2 is. So to solve this, I need to figure out N, how many shares of stock. And I need to figure out N2, how many contracts we need. But notice that all of these deltas, this is a delta for the stock, this is the delta for the first option, this is a delta for the second option, they all have to combine to be zero because all three of these pieces are going to be in my account. So that's the first part of the problem, but then it gets even dicier because I also need my gammas to be zero. So remember, we've shorted an option and we know what that gamma is. That's what this minus gamma is for the first option. But now I need to figure out how many contracts I'm going to buy and what the gamma will be of that second option. And I need both of these to be zero. And again, that's because both of these are going to be in my account. So for those of you who have had algebra and might recall having to solve what are called simultaneous equations with two unknowns, pretty easy to do. But let's just start by solving. There's a lot of ways we could do it, but let's solve this N2 right here. So we just solve it algebraically and we would find that N2 is the ratio of these gammas. The gamma of the first option divided by the gamma of the second. And that's going to give me a number. And notice that this N2 is also what we need up here. So whatever this number is, I'm going to plug in right there. I know my delta of the second option. I know my delta of the first option. I know my delta for stock is one. So all of these, we just plug in and we can solve for it. So if we do that, here's the result. The ratio of the two gammas, gamma of my first option divided by the gamma of the second, tells us how many contracts of the new call that we need to buy. So in this example, I'm assuming that we bought this 30-day $100 call under the same conditions that I talked about in the pricing model. And that means that this number would come up to be 0.54. So we would need to buy 0.54 contracts. Now, of course, you can't buy 0.54 contracts. So let's say that maybe you had 10 calls short of that first option. Well, you could buy five. That'd be pretty close to the 5.4 that you would technically need. But this is another layer of risk in the options market. We have to trade in 100 share units. Now, if we went back and figured out that first equation for the number of shares, we would find that it comes up to be the delta of the first option minus this ratio of our two gammas times the delta of the second option. And so again, that tells us how many shares of stock we would need. So if we actually plugged all of these numbers in, we would find that it comes up to be 0.28. So we would need 28 shares of stock. Again, it's 0.28 because each contract controls 100 shares. You'd need to buy 28 shares of stock. So if we did this, in our account, we would have short the $100 call. That was the first position that we sold. 
we're going to be long 0.54 contracts of the 30-day call, this is the second option, plus 28 shares of stock. And if we do this, we have now created a gamma neutral strategy. And this is what we've done. Notice that the blue curve has now been flattened out into this red curve. Still not perfectly flat. If the stock rises up here, we still will eventually head into losses. And if it makes a big enough fall, we will head into losses, but not nearly as bad. Take a look, even here at 110 on the original curve in blue, we'd be down about a buck fifty. But on our gamma neutral portfolio, we're down eh, maybe 25 cents. Same thing if the stock falls to 90, down 25 cents instead of down here at about maybe two bucks on this side. What if the stock falls to 85? Now we're only down about $1.25 on our gamma neutral portfolio, but on the original one that was just delta neutral, we're down about $4.25. So you can see that this red line is considerably flatter. Considerably, but not perfect. So this is why even if you are delta neutral and or gamma neutral, don't ever overlook the fact that you still have risk. But this hopefully will at least give you the idea of what it means to be gamma neutral or to do a gamma hedge. But once again, even if you didn't really follow all of the steps, that's okay. There's a bigger message here, and that is if you're trying to find better ways to reduce risk but increase your profits, options give you options. You might not need better stock picking skills or advanced technical analysis or faster news services. Instead, you might just need better ways to manage risk. So for those who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a brand new technical analysis course for 2021. You can find it all on optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.